Now, when we factorize a quadratic expression or a quadratic equation, we're doing the reverse of that. So we'll start with a relatively simple example. If we start with x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now, when we factorize this, it's going to appear in the form x plus a number in one bracket and x plus a number in the other bracket. Now, the way that we determine these two numbers, okay, so first of all, what we need to look at is what two numbers, I'll just draw some loops on here, what two numbers add to make 2x? The reason they need to add to make 2x is because whatever the number is that sits here is going to be multiplied by x. And whatever the number is that sits here is going to be multiplied by x. When we take each of those terms involving x and add them, they must add to equal 2x. So we're looking for two numbers which, when added together, equal 2x. But that's not all. What we also need to find is what two numbers, when multiplied together, equal 1. Because if you remember when we were multiplying out the brackets, at some stage we need to multiply this term by this term here. So these two numbers need to multiply together to equal 1, and they need to add together to equal 2. So hopefully you can see that 1 and 1, well 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So our final answer, or our solution, when this is factorised, we get x plus 1, x plus 1. Let's look at another one. This time we're going to factorise x squared plus 4x plus 3. And we know that this is going to be of the form x plus a number in one bracket and x plus a number in another bracket. So what we're looking for is two numbers which add to equal 4 but that multiply to equal 3. Well, again, hopefully by inspection you can see that there's really only one solution to this. Those two numbers need to be 1 and 3 because when we add 1 and 3 together we get 4 and 1 times 3 is 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. We've got, from here to here, we've got 1x plus 3x. Well, 1x plus 3x is 4x. Now, sometimes these appear quite complicated, and you may have to go through a process of trial and error in order to find the solution, especially if we end up with something with a plus and a minus. So let's say, for example, this time, I'm going to go with x squared minus 3x plus 2. And when we factorise that, we're going to be left with x plus or minus a number in one bracket and x plus or minus a number in the other bracket. Again, what we're looking for is two numbers which add together to give minus 3, but multiply together to give 2. Now, as I look at this, I know that in order to get two numbers which multiply together to give a positive number, it either needs to be two positive numbers or it needs to be two negative numbers. There's no other possible solution. It has to be two positive numbers multiplied together or two negative numbers. But two numbers which add together to give a minus, I now know that the two pluses won't give me a solution. If I have two positive numbers and I add them together, I'm going to be left with a positive number. So the only solution is two negative numbers. So I've got x minus something, x minus something. For well, two negative numbers that add together to give minus 3 need to be the same two negative numbers that multiply together to give plus 2. So again, our only solution is minus 1 and minus 2 because we've got minus 1x minus another 2x is minus 3x, and minus 1 times minus 2 is plus 2.
The only way really to get good at these is through practice. So once we're finished with the video, make sure you work through the practice questions. You may even need to go through them two or three times until this really starts to sink in. But let's do one more then. x squared plus 2x minus 8. Okay, and we know we're going to have two brackets, x either plus or minus a number in one bracket, and x plus or minus another number in a second bracket. Now this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this number on the end, because this is the number that's going to go here multiplied by the number that's going to go here. Now the key to solving this is realising that we've got a negative number, minus 8. Now the only way to get a minus number is to multiply a positive and a negative together, or to multiply a negative and a positive together. So we already know, before we go any further, that one of these is going to be a plus, and the other one's going to be a minus. Now we're looking for two numbers which multiply together to give minus 8, but add together to give plus 2. Now let's look at some of the possible numbers that we could have. We could have um, minus 8, and 1, because minus 8 times 1 is minus 8. The problem is, is minus 8 plus 1 doesn't give us 2x, or doesn't give us 2. So let's look at another one. What else could we multiply together? We could multiply together um, 4 and minus 2. Well, 4 and minus 2 is minus 8, and 4 minus 2 is also giving us what we're looking for here, 2. So what we're going to end up with is we've got x plus 4, and we've got x minus 2. I could have continued this process of trial and error if, if that hadn't yielded the answer that I was looking for, but in this case it has yielded the answer that I'm looking for, because 4 times 2 gives me the minus 8, and plus 4x minus 2x gives me the 2x that I was looking for here. So that expression, when factorised, is x plus 4x minus 2.